am, the servants of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Wow. What a confident and weighty response that Mary gave to that angel. There was no hesitation and no more questioning, just a statement of her complete faith in God. How many times do we feel called by God to do something or be someone or to have complete faith and we question it? In my case, when I'm called by God to do something or be something or have complete faith, I usually run the opposite way as fast as I can. And I do that because I know that it's not easy to have complete faith in God. And the simple answer when God calls us to do something is almost never, here I am, the servants of the Lord. God's call always seems to have strings attached. Think, for example, David, who we read about in the first reading. He was the youngest of his seven brothers, and he was the one that was out tending sheep when all of his other brothers were in town. David probably imagined his life pretty simply as a shepherd in a small town, and nothing really more. But God chose him to be a mighty king. God chose David to be the ancestor of Christ. David was the beginning of a line of royalty. And God chose this young, ruddy boy from Bethlehem to be this great king. And without hesitation, David said yes. And he went and he walked that path with God. Mary, too, was from a small town, a town that people, when hearing that something big was happening there, said, Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Mary was also very young. She wasn't yet married, so that meant that she was probably 13 or 14 years old at the time when this angel visited her. And she didn't seem to stand out in any particular way. She, it doesn't mention her beauty or her piety until after this passage. And she wasn't a prophetess like many of the women of the Old Testament that are mentioned. She was just Mary. And I'm sure she imagined her life much the same way as David did, simple and just being a mother and a wife. But God, as God often does, had different plans for Mary's life. An angel appeared to her and told her of this completely new plan. And even more than that, the angel came to her and told her of this completely new plan for the son that she didn't even know she was going to have. And in the same way, we often get along with our lives in a quite simple, easy way. We have plans. We have expectations. More or less, we know what our gifts are, and we're willing to use them. If we like to cook, we might bake cookies for the live nativity. If we enjoy singing, we might join the choir. If we're organized, we could help with the tag sale. We use what we feel our gifts are to do the things that we feel we are good at and comfortable with. But maybe God is calling us to be a little more uncomfortable this season. If we truly listen to God, or if we had an angel appear to us and speak to us as Mary so conveniently did, we might find that God is calling us for something quite different than what we expect. You see, David, in this first reading, and I know it's a little hard to understand, it took me three or four times going through it to really grasp 
what was happening in the first reading. But David wanted to build a home for the Ark of the Covenant so that God would have a place to stay. You see, David and all of his people had been moving around all over the place for years and years. And the Ark of the Covenant had been in a tent or a tabernacle. And so now that David had settled down and there was no more fighting, David had a place of his own made out of cedar. And he thought that he would use his wealth and his power to also make a house of cedar for the Lord. But God said, through the prophet Nathan, that God did not want David to build him a temple or a house, but quite the opposite. And the Hebrew here is so awesome. I wish you could grasp the play on words. But God meant that God would create through David a new house. God says, you will not build me a house for you cannot contain God, but I will build you a house. God meant that he would build a dynasty for David. He would be the first of a royal line of kings that would reign forever. God, as he often does, flipped David's plans on its head, saying, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Mary, too, thought that she had a plan for her life, and she would marry Joseph and be normal and be a Jew in Nazareth. But God's plans were much greater. She would become the mother of the Christ child, the child who will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. You see, Mary would be the woman who is glorified and honored through every generation because she is the mother of Jesus. She will be honored because of her faith in God. Mary will be honored because of her resounding yes when called to do something different. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. We are not always as quick as David and Mary to say yes to God. And many times, if we eventually say yes, it's after years and years of putting it off. But the good news is, God is working to turn our lives upside down and inside out by calling us into the baptismal waters and out into the world. And as scary as it seems, God chooses us for a new life in baptism, a life of recreation and reconciliation. And the really good news is that we are chosen by a God who does not call us into something difficult and then leave us to our own devices. But we are called by a God who walks with us. A God who says, do this, and it's going to be difficult, but I am going to be with you every step of the way. We are chosen by a God who has made grand promises to David and terrifying yet grand promises to Mary and a God who fulfilled those promises. This is our God who fulfills the promise of sending a savior, even if he fulfilled it in an unexpected way, in a tiny baby instead of a mighty warrior. Our God fulfills his promises. Our God promises in our baptism that we are made new and that we are forgiven. Our God promises that in the bread and in the wine, we are with God and experiencing the foretaste of the feast to come. And in the Eucharist, we experience the beginnings of the promise and the new kingdom, the kingdom where all might be joined to Christ and live in love. And if that is the God that we truly worship, 
the God that fulfills his promises and promises so much more, and if that is the God that meets us in the water and the word, and if that is the God that invites us to the table at every opportunity, and if that is the God who longs for a relationship with us, so longs for a relationship with us, that he sent his only son on earth to walk among us and be with us and take on our wounds and die for us, if this is the God who continues to surprise us with his grace and his love, how can we say anything else but here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen. Amen.